It is August 22nd, 2016. This is the Watchman News, and I'm watching a clip uh, from CNN of a, a baby being revived after his mother um, was pummeled with, with shrapnel. As if that's uh, not crazy enough, you know, I've been really outspoken lately about this stuff needing to stop. Because it doesn't matter whether it's here, it doesn't matter whether it's in another country, it doesn't matter. It's got to stop. They're human beings. And I see reports like what I'm going to be showing you and it totally baffles my mind. Earlier today, Michael Connelly, Connelly shared with me an article. And I read it, moved on. Then, later on today, I seen another article from another news source with a totally opposite direction. So we'll go on with this and, and, and what I was talking about, about it me needing to stop, it, it plays into all this because this is nothing but BS games that me and you are not a part of. It's about politics, it's about money, it's about power. It's not about who we are, it's not about who they are. So NBC News reported earlier, as the headline says, Iran, Russia will no longer use our base to strike ISIS in Syria. The story says Russia will no longer be using an Iranian air base to launch strikes over Syria, an official in Tehran told state media Monday. Foreign Ministry spokesman Baram Ghazimi did not give a reason for the move saying only that the short-lived cooperation between Moscow and Tehran was never meant to be permanent. Russia has no base in Iran, nor has it deployed its fighter jets in our country, Cassini told the news agency. It was a temporary mission that ended. Moscow confirmed the arrangement had ended saying in a statement that Russian warplanes had accomplished all mission goals and were now back in Russian territory. Any future use of the base will be done based on mutual agreements on combating terrorism and depending on the situation in Syria, Russian's defense ministry said. Tehran's announcement that the partnership had ended came just hours after Iranian Defense Minister General Hossein Dagan criticized Russia for publicizing their use of the base near the city of Hamad, Hamadan, I'm, I know I'm butchering these folks, uh, last week, a day before it was confirmed by Iran. Russians are interested to show they are a superpower to guarantee their share in political future of Syria, Dagan told state-run TV, according to the Associated Press, and, of course, there has been a kind of show-off an ungentlemanly attitude in this field. Moscow and Tehran are the main international backers of Syrian President Bashar Assad, with Russia supporting the ruler's forces with airstrikes and Iran with ground troops. Okay, so they're, they're saying right there on NBC News that it's done and over with, that that Russia will not be using Iran's air bases or anything like that. They're telling you that Russia themselves had even said that they're not going to do this anymore. Now let's go look at the RT article that came out after this article. Okay. This one is titled, All Russian Planes Back from Iran Base, Future Missions Possible, Moscow. Okay. Russian Air Force warplanes have left the base in Iran from which they last week bombed terrorist targets in Syria, Moscow and Tehran said the deployment had achieved its goals. 
The Russian aircraft, which flew missions from the Iranian Hamadan Air Base against terrorist targets in Syria, have successfully completed their tasks. The warplanes are currently back in the Russian Federation, Russian Defense Ministry spokesman Igor Kanak, um Oh gosh, I'm not going to be able to do that, uh, say that. Um, anyway, now that pretty well is in line with, with the NBC report. He added that, few, or that further deployments of the Russian military to Iran would be based on mutual agreements on fighting terrorism and depending on the developments in Syria. Iran's foreign ministry spokesman confirmed the outcome. They did this operation and it is finished for now, Baram Qasimi was quoted as saying um, by Tasnim News Agency. Earlier, Iranian Defense Minister Hossein Dingan said the Russian deployment was temporary, but it would last as long as it needed. Now, wait a minute. We didn't hear that. We, we didn't hear it that way. Not whatsoever we didn't hear it that way. They were saying that it's done. That it's done. And now, here they're saying as long as it's needed. The unexpected deployment last week of Tu-22 M3 heavy bombers and Su-34 fighter bombers was criticized by the White House, which called it unfortunate and speculated that it might have violated a UN Security Council resolution which bans the transfer of combat aircraft to Iran. Now, folks, what's happening is Russia is going in there and cleaning house. Russia is going in there and taking care of business. But you have to understand the basis of all of this. You have to understand who is arming, funding, backing, and training ISIS. Once you understand that, you get why it's not okay in, in our government's eyes for Russia to be being successful with these, these bombing missions. Anyway, to continue... Moscow dismissed the notion on several occasions with the Defense Ministry on Monday, reaffirming that it was an anti-terrorism mission, not an arms sale contract. In the case of using Iranian territory by Russian military aircraft, we should proceed from the annex to UN Security Council Resolution 2231, which sets out a regulatory measures of arms supplies to Iran. In this case, we are not talking about arms supplies or sales, said Mikhail uh, Yulin. Oh, gosh, that's another one I can't do. Head of the ministry's non-proliferation and arms control department. According to him, it was a bilateral agreement on the use of Iranian airfield by Russian planes and no approval from the UN Security Council on such operation as required by definition. Russia and Iran both support the Syrian government in its fight against Islamic groups such as Islamic State, formerly ISIS, ISIL, and Al Nusra Front. So you have to read between the lines here, folks. You have to read between the lines, understanding, once again, who trains, funds, backs, you know, arms ISIS, okay? You know, it, it's kind of crazy that every time other than Syria, when they talk about ISIS or whatever name they're calling it this week, they're bad guys. But apparently in Syria, they're good guys. Either way you look at it, it's mercenaries. Essentially, it's mercenaries. This game has to stop. Most of these wars that are happening in the Middle East aren't happening because they really hate each other. They're happening because they're being instigated. It's crazy. It's got to stop. 